Today I'm going to be showing you guys the best beginner strategy in Balloon CD Battles 2. And it's this strategy right here. Tack, Farm, Wizard, Quincy. So if you guys do enjoy and you want to see more videos like this, let me know by dropping a like on today's video. And if you are new, we are trying to hit 500,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. And we still got a ways to freaking go. So it would mean the world to me if you would click that subscribe button because it's free and you can always change your mind at the end of the day. All right, we got Quincy jumping out of a bush because he's a bush camper, I guess. Anyway, our opponent has Benjamin as their hero. Guys, this strategy, I think, is the best beginner strategy because it is super, super easy to use. It works out too on most of the maps, but for example, like a map like this, it's not the greatest at the same time, but don't get me wrong, it can still work, okay? I'm gonna be starting off with the tax shooter, actually, as our first pop and power tower right here instead of not down here. I think this spot's going to be a little bit better for us. And then we're also going to go for my boy Quincy, but more towards the back of the map, okay? And since he's not currently sending us anything, that means we don't necessarily need to upgrade. And we could easily afford going for a round one Quincy. That's super, super important because heroes level themselves up over time. So the earlier that you set them down, they gain XP at the start of every single new round. So if you can, then try to set down most of the time your hero on round one space greens here by the way we're gonna go for the middle path upgrades on this tack here and then we're ultimately probably gonna have to go for the blade shooter since uh the tack shooter is not the greatest on this map uh so sometimes you don't have to you can go for the top path upgrades it's a bit cheaper but it's all situational and that's what you're gonna be finding out in today's video there's a lot of factors that play into certain situations like for example when you have to upgrade when you don't have to upgrade okay he went for a farm though so i'm definitely gonna balloon boost over on his side because that was low-key greedy because he didn't even upgrade his tax share, like really at all. I'm going to go for my farm. Now, when you can too, go for your banana farms before the start of the new round because you're getting an extra banana. Are, are we chilling though? Yeah, as you can see. Okay, so he already went with the top path upgrades, but he was still struggling. So he spent quite a bit on his defenses. And dude, oh my God, with him having Benjamin as his hero... He's really going to be struggling because, again, the tax shooter just really is not all that good on this map. Uh, but I'll probably go for the greater production here because, yeah, like, we're fully chilling since Quincy is goaded during the earlier game rounds. But here's the thing with the hero slot. It's interchangeable. Like, you don't have to run with Quincy. It's just that you already have Quincy unlocked if you are on a brand new fresh account or you're just new to Battles 2. With the other heroes, except for Gwendolyn, you're going to have to grind XP for them and stuff, you know? So, and monkey money. So, you'll have Quincy ready to go right from the jump, okay? And look, dude, they had to go for another tax shooter. Because, again, tax sucks on this map, man. So, even against Space Whites, he's out here struggling. We're going to continue on sending Space Whites. And hopefully, you guys have been paying attention to what balloons have been uh, sending this whole entire time. Because... That is also super, super important. But the reason why we're not sending Space Blacks is because with Space Whites, we're still increasing our eco. We're still spending money on our eco. But at the same time, it's a little bit cheaper than sending those Space Blacks. So we'll ultimately be able to go for a Banana Plantation here a little bit earlier on, okay? And look, now we're out farming him despite him going for the Banana Farm first and having a hero that quite literally makes him money. So... That is super, super hype. And he's not even currently sending us any balloons. Guys, we are in ZOMG Superdome, the second highest arena in all of Battles 2. So if this strategy can work in this arena, then it most definitely can work in the lower arenas. And since bro is not sending us any balloons, bro, I'm going to go for another farm here. And he is too. Oh my goodness, man. Okay, so I don't know. It's kind of a mistake on his behalf because here on round nine, we're actually going to be quite aggressive with sending spaced regen zebras, okay? This is a pretty deadly rush sometimes, so let's see how he reacts to that. Since he's not sending us anything, we don't even have to go for anything over on our side. And as you can see, it's going to regrow around that bend. We got the tower boost, okay? So let's get back to sending space whites, but he still might be dead. And yeah, he's dead, okay? ZOMG Superdome, guys. I mean, <laughs> that guy, he, he was kind of doing a bunch of weird stuff, but... Nonetheless, we got the win. Let's go a little bit later with the next one. All right, this time around, we got the map Koru and Tack Farm Wizard Quincy is a wonderful strategy for this map. We can actually start off with the Tack Shooter and then also immediately go for Quincy more down here. You want him kind of more towards the back of the map because of his level three ability, because it's like sort of like a last line of defense. You use that level three ability and it can absolutely destroy the balloons that get past 
your like front of the line defenses, if that makes sense, okay? But our opponent's gonna be starting off with the Boomer. Now, Boomer is super, super good in this map, okay? So this is not going to be a walk in the park to win. And this map is much, much better for the tax shooter compared to the last map. Although, like, we didn't really struggle all that much now that I think about it during the earlier game rounds. We actually got kind of lucky because our opponent wasn't sending balloons, but that isn't very common in the second highest arena in ZMG Superdome. People tend to send balloons uh, pretty much the entire game. Our opponent had a tower boost, though. Oh, that is not a good look for them. You know what? I probably could have greeted it for a farm there. Ugh, that's greedy, though. I'm not going to lie, boys. Okay, so I'll most likely just go with the blade shooter here. Yeah, let's just go for that. So I, I could have greeted for a farm, but then I have to pay the price of my opponent potentially realizing that and then punishing me for it. You know what I mean? So greed is super, super situational as well. It really just depends on a lot of factors. No way we didn't get the farm, though, before the start of round four. Okay, that kind of sucks because we didn't gain that extra banana. Uh, but it's because we are popping these balloons right as they come out the map. Guys, the quicker that you pop the AI balloons, not the player set balloons, but the AI balloons, the quicker the rounds will end. But that's kind of good for our case because our strategy has a banana farm within it. And farms are round dependent. They produce a certain number of bananas every single round. Whereas Eco, this green number up here, it is time dependent. It comes in every six seconds. And so far, our opponent has been Ecoing this entire game. Oh my god, wait. Wait, wait, wait. That actually really worked out for him there. Okay, I had to completely stop Ecoing. Oh my god, like that never happens. But what he did was he used his level three ability on Highway Man Jericho. And it auto sold my tower because I didn't have enough money on hand for him to steal from. And if you don't have enough money on hand, then it just auto sells your tower. So you do have enough money on hand, if that makes sense. Okay, but he's got the spike factory too. Okay, wait, what is this dude cooking up? What is bro cooking up, man? Okay, but usually against space whites and space blacks, by the way, you need a 230 uh, blade shooter. Okay, with that, you should be full full freaking chilling but most likely here on round seven he's gonna be sending us grouped yellows which you know it actually should be fine i mean so far he hasn't okay wait never mind scratch that so we can greed here because we could tower boost ideally we don't want to right though um and yeah we actually are full vibing there i'm not even gonna use my level three ability it is all good let's go for that banana plantation all right round seven banana plantation for this map is pretty darn good okay and because this map is a little bit more on the difficult side we'll probably not greed for another farm like we did in the last game uh so that i can prepare a little bit more of my defenses right so i'm gonna have my wizard right next to my tax shooter right here right next to quincy as well we'll go for that fireball intense magic we could maybe send them zebras let's see if zebras even get through because to be completely honest with y'all I'm not even sure if they do get through. Okay, he's going to send us some Zebras too. Okay, looks like the Zebras are getting through a little bit. It's going to eat out his uh, spike pile a little bit. Okay, he's greeting. I'm going to use my level 3 ability. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the play for him, okay? So I'm going to chill now. I'll go for Wall of Fire. Okay, send us some purples. I'm going to completely stop Eco in here because he could potentially rush us here on round 11. But, bro, like, is he even ready for a rush? I feel like he's not. So, I'm going to send him a little bit of a zebra rush myself. Okay, we're good. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We're going to have to re-rush him here. Most definitely. So, this is kind of an awkward game. But this happens in the higher arenas, boys. We're kind of both drained right now. But he can't necessarily defend against a rebrush. Regen rainbows, purples all over top, and yep, he's dead. All right, that was scary. Okay, as you can see, lots and lots of games. You can get wins with this strategy during the mid-game rounds. And if that's what you're looking for, great. But like I said in the last game, I want to take the next game even further so I can show you what to do with this strategy during the later game round. So that's going to be the goal. I'll see y'all there. Okay, so this time around, we got the map Glade. Another, like, medium size, more difficult map for sure. But Tack Farm Wizard does, in fact, work. Okay, so we're actually going to be starting off with the Tack Shooter right about there. And then we're going to want Quincy. I mean, we could have him more towards the front of the map or more towards the back of the map. I'm thinking more towards the front just so he can help us out a little bit. 
and I was a little bit late to sending him down, so we actually might leak a couple lives because of that, but we're not going to worry about the life advantage. Yeah, never worry about the life advantage, by the way, when using this strategy. <laughs> like, you never need to, okay? And he was able to go for a round one uh, Captain Churchill there. He barely sent me any balloons, so I didn't really have to upgrade my tax shooter all that much, but I guess I should still anyway, because, yeah, the blues are going to layer within the AI and stuff like that, so... Dude, there's just so much to talk about when you really get deep into this game. There's so many things that go into this game. So if I do miss anything or if you guys have any questions on anything, please let me know down in the comments below. Oh, I could have greeted there. See, because he's only sending group threads. He's not sending space to eco. Like, he hasn't really been aggressive. So that's why I'm thinking that would have been a good time to greet for a farm, which we still can. It's just that we would have got an extra banana out of that. You know what I mean? So... I guess it's a little bit safer doing this, though. He's still only sending me group dreads, too. He most definitely should not be doing that. Okay, here come the group blues. So we'll play this save. We'll go for the blade shooter, because we already went for an early farm, right? So I am perfectly fine with going for the blade shooter right there. we got to watch out, though, for round four space pinks. If he sends those, most likely at least have to go for the faster shooting. And again, for space white slash space blacks, you absolutely have got to upgrade twice on the top path to the even faster shooting upgrade. Or else you won't be able to fully, fully defend, okay? But I'm thinking after maybe... Okay. Let's use level 3, too. We don't, like... See, like, we didn't need to use level 3 there. It's just to conserve lives, because why not? The cooldown on the level 3 ability is not very long, so... That's why I decide to do that. But round 5 is already here, okay? So I'm gonna already click on my attack shooter, so I'm ready for when I see those space whites. Okay, group greens, too, since I guess he's using a pure strategy. Yeah, he still has yet to... Set down any sources of alt eco, no banana farms, no nothing like that. So that is why he's sending these group greens here. Makes a lot of sense. And I guess he's fine over on his side as well. Now, Captain Churchill does struggle to black balloons. So he, he could potentially struggle to those. And because of that, I'm actually down to send my opponent space black balloons. When I was just talking about in the other games, why I like to send space whites. But again, since my opponent might possibly struggle here, this might force him to upgrade to certain defenses. So he's spending his money on his defenses rather than spending his money on increasing his eco game. You know what I mean? Oh, he's got the spike factory too. Okay. Fair play well done with that. I don't know. Some of these balloons are somehow getting by. It's all good though. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. So is he not going to send me group jealous here? I mean, he was equal one before, but we were still able to go for a pretty early round seven banana plantation. So we are vibing at the moment. We're going to cross path this bad boy too with the valuable bananas. Now, because he's not sending us anything, we could technically greed uh, for another 200 farm. It is risky though, because this map is quite difficult, but I think we might be able to get away with it. Okay, so... Again, this is all situational. It depends on a lot of things. But I think in this situation, we, we can just get away with it, okay? Definitely on the greedier side, though, to go with another 200 farm on top of an already banana plantation, right? He's alk buffing that? Okay, bro. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to go a little bit later with this game, so that is completely fine, actually. Let's go with this. Go for wall of fire. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Notice how I stopped decoying, by the way, just to ensure that we'd actually afford that. Ooh. Okay, but he's still sending. He's definitely greeting, which sucks, because I can't really punish him, because I want to go later with this game. So that definitely sucks. Okay, space regen. Zebras. Oh, no. We don't like that. All right, but I already went for the shimmer here. Round 11. Let's see what happens. I mean, since he sent so many space zebras, most likely. Okay. Wow. I'm going to let it slide, though, because I want to go later. I want to go later with this game, man. But we just went for the bottom path upgrades before we actually sold that banana farm there. So we got the increase of sellback value uh, from selling that farm so that we could easily afford that Maelstrom. I mean, we just get more sellback value, right? So why not do that? Uh, but obviously, that requires a bit more micro. Uh, but round 13 is here. Okay, so since he made us sell our farm... I'm going to go ahead and go for this farm once again. I like on like more difficult maps, medium sized, smaller maps too as well. I like to have more farms so I have more selling power during the mid game rounds. In case our opponent sends us a ginormous rush, then you know we have more selling power once again out of these two banana plantations right here. So hopefully that all kind of sort of makes sense. But now that we got our farms built up, 
we're going to be max sequin with Groot Black Eco Balloons throughout these mid-game rounds. Our Eco Goal is actually not going to be all that high because Moab Class Balloons are pretty hard to defend against on a map like this. So we're really going to have to watch out for those and do Tax Shooter. It is good on this map, but it's not very good against Moab Class Balloons. That's the unfortunate thing. So we have really got to watch out. And so because of that, you know what? 1100 eco it is. We're going to stop ecoing here. I'm going to remove this obstacle, actually. We can even sell you uh, to instead replace you with at least a tax sprayer for now. Okay, he's going to be sending us a few balloons here, by the way. I'm going to use my level 3 ability, which kind of sucks, but it's like the purples within the AI were kind of messing me up and stuff. So just wanted to play that safe. He's got a pretty dense pile of spikes once again, so I guess we'll just let him be. And I kind of want to defend against rushes and stuff, so... He did stop ecoing. That's usually an indication that your opponent's going to be rushing. Oh, nope, he's back to ecoing. Okay, so I'm going to go for another farm. I definitely could have went for this farm. Ooh, wait. We're struggling now. Okay, so because we're struggling so much, I'm just going to go for overdrive. Ah, oh, that so sucks, because, like, typically you don't need to do that. It's just, again, the tax shooter is kind of mid on this map. I could have went for another wizard, but wizards really do struggle to purple balloons. So I kind of wanted to go for something that could pop purples, right? Around 18 is here now. We might have to go for a double attack shooter. Okay. Okay, we're good here. Okay, maybe didn't need a tower boost. Again, this map is iffy, boys. But this is one of the most versatile strategies, okay? It can work on maps like this. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. A few things change. Get to go for more defenses and stuff sometimes. All right, so... I feel like, I mean, I can't really do anything, though. I really can't. I'm going to keep this here because we could potentially upgrade this to a Dragon's Breath or even a Summon Phoenix, okay? Because that Summon Phoenix ability is pretty darn OP. And we've, we've got a lot of money on hand at the moment. And that's only because our eco is kind of low. Can't lie, but it is fine. Okay, a lot of ceramics and stuff within the AI here. All right, he's going to go for a rubber to gold. A little bit late on that. Oh, my God. We even struggled to the AI right there. That's crazy. Okay, I think I'm going to send him a Fortified BFB. Yeah, he's definitely not going to like that. If he sent me a Fortified BFB, what I would do... Okay, he's going to send us one. Instantly go for a Phoenix here. It's not even a Fortified one, but still, I'm going for a Phoenix. Absolutely, freaking lootly this is the play. Against a Fortified one too as well. And we should be good. We can always Quincy level 10 here. That was close. Okay, I maybe I didn't need to use Quincy 10, but that got close. That got really close. Okay, is he fine? Ooh, I think he died. Yeah, okay. Wow, that game right there. Yeah, that got close. Again, Tag Farm Wizard. It works on most maps. It doesn't work on every map, but some maps are a little bit more difficult than others. But yeah, if you were to send us a ZOMG and stuff, going for more Wizards over Tag Shooters would definitely be the play, since the Tag Shooters are not that effective once again. We're going to play one more, though. All right, we got the map off time, which is definitely one of the better maps for Tack Farm Wizard Quincy. And we're probably going to be starting off with a Tack Shooter right here. It's laggy, too. What the heck? But also Quincy. Okay, yeah, especially because he's only sending me Space Blues here. So, yeah, we'll go with Quincy right about here. I, I guess I maybe should have had him more towards the back of the map. That's typically what I like to do, but it's okay. But, yeah, we don't even need to upgrade the Tack Shooter at all to defend against Space Blues because, bro, Quincy's goaded during these early to mid-game rounds, so he's putting in the work for us right now, okay? But round two, let's transition into Space Greens now, and we might as well go for the Super Range Tax Upgrade just because of this AI and stuff. We do want to try to pop these balloons right as they come out the map. That is what's ideal here. So, what? Sniper? I don't know what the heck I was trying to say right there. <laughs> <laughs> it just really got me off guard that he went for a sniper. Oh my god, can I go for a farm here? Yes, I can. Bro, we got the freaking round two farm. I was trying to do that in the other games. It really just depends on the situation. Okay, he's going to be sending me some space yellows, which is fine. And this is a game two where we can greed by going with the top path upgrades rather than the middle path blade shooter upgrade. Because going for the faster shooting and the even faster shooting in total is a bit cheaper than going straight for the blade shooter, if that makes sense. And in a spot like this, the tax shooter is absolutely goaded, and you can greed and go for those top path upgrades instead. Hopefully that kind of sort of makes sense. I don't know. I feel like I've been yapping a lot 
in this video, but I told you guys in the intro, there's a lot to talk about. And again, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, we'll probably go for the greater production after just one more income boost here. So right now, beautiful, which is a bit risky because now he can send me Space Whites here on round five. We still absolutely need the Blade Shooter upgrade against Space Whites, okay? So I'm going to slow down my eco a little bit, use level three as well. And yep, we are full, full chilling there. Now with this game, like I said, we do want to go a bit later. So if our opponent happens to be greedy or I could easily kill him during the mid game rounds, we're just going to act like that's not a thing. And we're going to go a little bit later with this one. Okay, Mortar. What is bro cooking? What? Boomer Mortar Sniper. I have no idea. Bro, wait, they've been space equaling this entire time too. Wait, that's not smart. <laughs> They should be max equaling. They have no source of old eco. I mean, they have sniper farms, but they can't go for a sniper farm anytime soon. So they should be max equaling during these earlier game rounds to effectively build up their eco. Like for now, they're going to be fine. Don't get me wrong. But in the long run, they're not going to have enough money to go for the adequate defenses or just have enough money in general, like just straight up. So we're going to let them be. But just know this is not what you want to do. Do not do what this guy is doing okay but i'm gonna go for the valuable bananas upgrade here too on this banana plantation and i feel like because we are in such a better state this time around we won't greed like we did in the other games okay uh, just because i have a feeling that this guy might rush us because he's space decoing and also too he might send me space zebras but because i didn't go for another farm i'm gonna send space zebras but uh should i go with yeah i think i should go with maybe my wizard like right about there. I'm not sure exactly where the best necromancer spot is. There's not really a point where like the balloons meet twice or anything like that. But I'm thinking after the attack shooter right here, just because the attack shooter right here can pop off the purple balloon layer. And then the wall of fire attack back here won't get extinguished because yes, once the purple balloons hit that wall of fire, the wall of fire itself goes bye bye. Okay, but looks like no rushes so far so i'm gonna just straight up go for the necromancer i'll at least go for fireball here but i guess for now we won't even cross path it yet with the wall of fire but round 12 is here space rainbows it is and with this shimmer hopefully it's able to decamo down everything for our attack shooter so it looks like it can barely not hit these balloons right here a bit unfortunate but we, we should be fine okay so our opponent is kind of over defending. I mean, they did go for Amora Glaives, but with the wrong cross path. That is the wrong cross path. <laughs> but you know what? Again, we're going to let it slide, and we're going to simply be max ecoing with Groot Black Eco throughout these mid game rounds. And because these rounds are kind of flying by here, boys, I think my eco goal might not be all that high. I think on Glaive, what? It was like 1100. I'll probably go for more than that, maybe like 13 to 1500, okay? Because on this map, I feel a little bit safer, so that means I can go for a bit of a higher eco, if that makes sense, okay? Clade, I did not feel very safe on because of that Moab uh, sent path, man. That can be definitely super, super brutal, okay? But it's already round 16, man. Yeah, again, rounds flying by. I mean, he, even him, he's popping the balloons literally right as they come out the map. He is quite literally shooting himself in the foot right now, but he probably doesn't realize it. Okay, it's about to be the start of round 17, so I'm going to stop ecoing here. Actually, no, no, no. Let's push it a little bit higher because against unfortified mobs, usually with Tac Farm Wizard, with this setup, you're fine against those. But against fortified mobs, now that's a little bit of a different story, okay? You got to watch out for those for sure because you need an overdrive uh, for those fortified mobs. And by the way, I might just go with... My overdrive like right there. For now, we'll leave it as a 000 attack shooter. Can I not go for another farm there? I think I botched my placements a little bit. It's fine though. Okay, we'll go for a marketplace down here. Technically, I should have went for another banana plantation. So I kind of messed that up a bit. But that's because I messed up these placements. All right, he did stop ecoing. So he might send us a rush. Usually that's an indication. Yep. We're good. We went for overdrive. Okay, he's going to balloon boost. So I'll definitely tower boost that. And then we might have to use level three or we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, a tower boosted overdrive is super, super freaking good. Okay, so against fortified mobs should be absolutely fine. If he were to re-rush us on round 19 with fast cooldown fortified mobs, we would simply just go for a summon Phoenix. Okay, because obviously he would be spending a lot of money on setting fortified mobs. I mean, the $2,000 per fortified mobs. So 
that wouldn't be too smart for him because again he's been space decoying he's so vulnerable right now it's not even funny he would die to one one singular fortified map but we're just gonna let him be we got the double banana plantation double marketplace this is what i usually try to shoot for before the start of round 20 by the way never even had to go for the wall of fire which is pretty crazy okay but against that mob we're gonna be absolutely fine beautiful so we'll probably try to go for a double central market here by the way and at the moment he did stop equaling but at the moment he still has yet to send us anything like a fortified bfb so i'm gonna go for that central market and he's probably gonna send me a zomg right i mean with the way things are going right now with him not sending eco or anything again that's an indication that your opponent's gonna be aggressive uh he's probably gonna send us a zomg here so definitely have got to watch out against that but i kind of want him to send us a zomg so i can show you guys how i would defend against it so we're still gonna go for another central market here though but still nothing bro okay wait he's back to ecoing wait he sent those black balloons right there i know he did yeah he wait what <laughs> I don't know what the heck is happening. Oh, wait. He might die of the fortified ceramics. No, no, wait. He's got that sniper. That sniper is going hard. Oh, fortified ZMG. Okay. We're going to play this smart. We're not going to greet here. Okay. Because I just don't want to die. We're going to overdrive spam here. Okay. Because the overdrives in this spot's right here. Super ideal. We're going to we're gonna tower boost because he balloon boosted. And then we're going to go for a super maelstrom. More towards the back of the map. I'm just going to sell a farm here, so I'm safe about it. And with that Super Maelstrom, we're good. Beautiful. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're not going to rebuild that farm. Because we're going to try to... I mean, we can sell a lot of these. Sell, sell. Sell, sell. Oh, my God. Get it. Yes. Beautiful. We got the Monkey Wall Street, too, before the start of round 25. That is super ideal. Okay, might have to Quincy level 10 this. Now we're good. Okay, so we got $10,000 at the start of the round. Is he just dead to fortify leads? No, don't die to fortify leads. No, I want to show to... No, I wanted to show how to defend against EDTs. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, he almost died. All right, so to defend against EDTs with the strategy, we obviously don't have all that much money. But one of the easier ways is just simply go for a Prince of Darkness, all right? Super simple. It can defend or handle space DDTs quite well in round 26. Let's see what he does here. Okay, he's just still ecoing. So yeah, these can handle space DDTs. But against group DDTs on round 28, little bit of a different story, okay? But because we are in such a better position, again, that's why I just wanted to play it safe by going with the Prince of Darkness. I mean, if you want to go with the Prince of Darkness, oh, he's dead. Oh my god, bro. Oh my, okay, if they send you round 28 DDTs, go for an Archmage. Bro, come on, man. We didn't even get to round 30. Yeah, Tack Farm Wizard, though, is a strategy that really falls off hard after round 30. This is not a GG epic late game strategy at all. This is a quick, simple, try to get fast and quick win strategy. Not a late game strategy at all. But again, if you guys have any questions for me, let me know down in the comment section below. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to let me know by dropping a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to click that subscribe button because it's free. And you can always change your mind at the end of the day. But if you haven't already, make sure to check out this video where, go ahead, defend 100 ZOMGs. See ya.